Hey guys, welcome to the Beetle Shelf. We're gonna get started here today. Um, we have a few containers of the Conus Mazama breeding right now, the Cottonwood Stag Beetle. Uh, and today we're just gonna open up one of the containers and check for eggs. We got um, 10 eggs about a week ago from the same female. Let's see if I can show you on the, on the small camera one of these eggs in here. Right there, you can see it on the camera. A little white speck right there is one of our eggs. So, there we go. Yep, got about 10 of those. They are, when they're uh, just laid, they're kind of brown and um, ovular. And as they age, they get bigger and wider. So, okay, let's uh, let's check this out. Okay, so when you open it up, let's take this fruit out of here. Actually, Put on this towel got some of our food, a little apricot. Okay, so when you go searching for eggs after you have your breeding container set up. Um, you want to loosen the dirt a little bit, get it nice and soft, and then we'll just slowly kind of kind of dump it into our tray. Being really careful, really careful. We're looking for our female first. Take her out. Lift you in a little bit. She should be close to the surface. Don't see her quite yet. Oh, there she is. Okay. So we'll put her... Come on. Okay, there she is. Nice. Got her out here. So I'll show you guys here on the uh, close-up camera. Okay, I'll put her on her little piece of fruit for you. Present her with this nice little chunk of fruit. This is a... Normal sized female, probably. Let's see if she stays for us. She's maybe, she would stop rotating, maybe, um, how long? Let's just rotate this a little bit. She's maybe two and a half, two and a half centimeters. It's a normal, normal sized female. You see her shake like that. That's how they identify others of their species so they don't eat each other's grubs. Okay, so now let's go through and uh, I'm gonna take some of this used substrate. Make sure there's no eggs. We're gonna take some and put her back in here so she can kinda have a happy little home before we put her back in. She's still pretty healthy, which is good. Take her off. Come here, bring the fruit, fruit with you. There you go, come on, nope. Pop her back in there and I'll bring the fruit in as well. Okay, cool. So there she is in the little container. We'll set her off to the side and make sure she doesn't escape right now. Now let's go on to checking out the substrate for our eggs. Okay. It's kind of damp, a little dry. Doesn't smell super good. You want it to smell kind of like a forest still. Uh, doesn't smell like a whole lot, so it's probably getting kind of used up. But let's check it out. She's already laid 10 eggs, so we'll see if she lays any more. Don't see any so far. This substrate is just um, what I collect around the area that I found her. Um, it looks like some rotten hardwood with a, uh, a normal compost soil. 
and then when I was preparing, that might be one, when I was preparing the substrate, um, you take chunks of hardwood and layer the bottom with it so that she has stuff to grind up and uh, encase the eggs in. And we'll show you that here in a sec when we find one of the eggs. If we find one of the eggs, we'll see what happens. Okay. So, Lucanus Muzama is a Lucanid stag beetle. We've got small critters in there. It's not good. Little tiny beetles. Um, Lucanus eggs are medium sturdy. They're probably not uh, super fragile, but they also aren't very hardy uh, like some other scarab eggs. Um, so we want to be careful when we are looking for them. Okay, this might be might see, find an egg in there. Let's check. I'll open up. We'll check it out in here. Show you on the camera. So they like to take these little clumps of dirt, as you can see right here, and they like to lay their eggs inside. So we'll just very tenderly break it up. See if we find anything. Very, very carefully. Okay, so nothing in there right now. You see no big uh, white or orange chunks. So just dump that back in. I don't see any other eggs so far. Okay, let's just keep going. Last time when I was doing this, I got to about this point and I was pretty discouraged because I didn't think I was going to find anything but this bottom uh, bottom inch inch and a half is pretty uh, dense and eggs could be really compacted in there so let's just see what we find I keep Breaking it up. And if at all possible, you want to avoid using a, uh, a spoon or anything to dig these out because it is uh, quite. That might be one. Dead one. Oh, there's one. Cool. So we'll. Once you see one, go ahead and. Very carefully scoop it out. Okay. Let's see if we can show you this. It might be. Might be dead. Okay, let's look for a better one. Sometimes if the conditions aren't right or whatnot, you might get dead eggs. You can tell if they're dead because they're brown, a darker color, not like a white. Oh, there's one, nice. Always gotta be careful where you're looking because you might over, uh, overlook one. Okay, let's put this underneath the, the micro lens. So right, uh, Right there, that's one of our eggs. And they kind of start out this this uh, darker color when they're first laid, but then as they grow, they become more white. So, it's a bit larger one. Might have been laid uh, a few days to a week ago. I might have missed it the first time around. So, it's a bit older because it's rounder. So what we'll do is we'll take um, one of our other small containers, take some of our original substrate so it feels comfortable kind of make sure we don't get any other eggs kind of toss it in there into this small little container and you can put um five or more eggs in something this big 
So we'll just take some more really fine substrate. You want it to incubate really well so we get some fine stuff. Um, set it up till it's full. And then I'll show you a cool trick for uh, monitoring some of the progress for your eggs. You want some of these bigger chunks uh, like this, larger things that that might uh, hurt the egg or the, uh, the young larvae out of there. You want to take some of those things out. Just keep the really finely ground stuff that the mom, the female, uh, packed around the eggs. And we do this just so it doesn't uh, get the egg or larvae doesn't get shocked to keep it the same kind of consistency. And I kind of pat it down a little bit, compact it. I like to grow in a uh, relatively hard environment. And then we'll do a layer of just kind of um, very soft, not compacted a whole lot. Bigger flakes can be at the top. You wanna, with the eggs, they don't need any space at the top, obviously, to roam around. So you can fill it up just about to the top. And then what we'll do is we'll take our pen or anything and we'll just put a few, a few holes, a few holes around the container. This is something that, one, two, three, four, five. This is something that a lot of Japanese breeders do. They'll take their uh, substrate container and put a few holes in it uh, like this. They have those holes around the side. And we'll do it around the edge like that. And then what you do is you'll place one egg uh, in each of these little holes. And the reason you do this is so when stuff starts hatching, you can uh, see it. It's against the wall right next to the substrate and you can see when it's hatching so you can kind of plan for your next step. Okay, so we'll take one of our our eggs. See if I can, I'll move the camera, see if I can get this, get this on here. So we'll take um, our egg, and just kind of it's right there at the very edge. Kind of plop it in the hole. Okay, and then kind of just lightly cover it up just a little bit and let's see if we can see that yep see that right up against right up against the side there so this kind of lets you see how it's progressing how it's developing and then uh when it hatches so highly recommend that all right let's keep keep looking just our camera back a little bit these eggs are just around a millimeter in diameter so okay now, the bottom of this is going to be really, really tough, really, really tough to get out. So, just making sure we didn't lose anything. So. Okay. Oh, that might be one. Yep, there's, oh, that's a really healthy one. Nice. Okay, cool. I'll show you what a really healthy, recently laid one looks like. See that, how it's nice and white and ovular. Really, really healthy looking egg. So once again, we'll take our, our hatching container, take the egg and kind of just plop it right in there. And you can see it on the side, nice. Take some of the original substrate and kind of put it on top, get the big chunks out. These eggs will sit in the hatching container for probably three to four weeks, uh, depending on the conditions. Um, nice one too.
Cool. Lots of eggs, number 11 and 12 uh, from this one female, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, so let's keep going on this. Only got a little bit, a little bit of substrate left, but oftentimes the female will lay eggs right here in the corners. So you have to make sure you go through and check uh, every little bit of it because you could have an egg stuck up right on the side of this little dirt right there. So um, don't really want to use the spoon because I don't want to hurt anything. Um, so we'll just see what we can get by. scrape a little bit there are a few clumps actually in here that I want to go do a search break when you find these little clumps in here uh, it's likely the female has laid an egg there it is very freshly laid so we'll take that and uh, Pop it right there for us. So I'll show you the egg again. Very fresh, pretty ovular. And then uh, this little clump we have here is just kind of some little dirt that's been compacted. And I just kind of take it over to my fingers a little bit and break it up. So it's kind of fun. You have these little clumps of dirt and you break it apart and go mine in for these little, you know, chunks of gold, kind of fun. Cool. Go and put this in our hatching container. Kind of step to the side very carefully, pop it out. And then again, take some of our substrate. Pop it on top. That one's a bit harder to see, uh, but it's still there. Once it gets bigger, it'll be very easy to see. So just so you can see what we're talking about. Um, you have one, you kind of can see it. It's kind of a bad camera. You kind of can see this one little white dot right there. See one more little white dot uh, right here. That's kind of what we're doing. You can see the eggs as they uh, develop and hatch. Okay. Um, this might be uh, might be the end of it. We'll check the last little bit. Um, if you're really worried about getting enough eggs, I'd go through and search every little clump that you can find really carefully get everything out that you could uh, we're at three eggs that's 13 then from this one female which is really really good uh, super happy about that okay let's just take our spoon and very carefully break up the sides of our container very carefully okay now let's go through and check this a few little clumps um, probably not much left in there okay let me check this last little bit that we had Right there, there's another clump right there. Broke it open, there we go, an egg. Okay. This is again a really healthy one. Really good looking egg, nice. So we'll plop that into our, uh, one of our holes right here. Get some of that dirt out so we can just get just the egg right in there nicely. Okay, and I'll show you that on our uh, micro camera. Oh, that's a bit harder to see. 
a bit further back. That's okay. You've seen, you've seen enough, so I understand. Okay, so that's four. For this one, I usually put just about five or so per container that big. Um, all right. Got a little, little tiny millipede. There, a little wormy. You want to kind of keep your substrate clear of those things. I just took this substrate uh, straight from the place I collected the first adult beetle and uh, didn't bake it or microwave it or anything. Uh, you can usually bake or my bake a uh, substrate like this at like 250 for half an hour or so and it kills anything in there. Uh, you can microwave it if you want. kind of stinks sometimes so. Uh, weigh your options. Microwave for two, two and a half minutes. And see, so I don't see anything else in here. Um, that might have been an egg. A really, really tiny one. Yep. Amazing how they can vary in size. There we go. See, so it's important to go through and check your substrate again because I just found another one in there. Let's see if I can get it in a place where you can see it a little bit better. So, um, yeah, put that in our final uh, slot in here, which is going to be Oh, I already got one down there. I tried to plan out the spots beforehand, but they kind of just fell through. We'll put them right down there. Okay. Present this nice egg with a beautiful container. Some really fine substrate from the bottom. Compact it a little bit, and you can kind of see see where it is. Where is it? Right there. You can uh, get our camera to focus in on it. Kind of having a hard time. Anyway, it's that little uh, dot right there. It's our egg. Okay, and then I uh, will take this, give it a little mist or two um, you don't want it too damp because then the eggs can um, suffocate and uh, becomes too damp for them and they can't breathe uh, same for larvae the adult beetles uh, the risk of um, having too much humidity isn't uh, as big a deal but um, it could create too hot and humid of an air and uh, kind of suffocate them as well, so we need to be careful. Um, so yeah, that was collecting our eggs from this lovely Wukonis Mazama. This is the cottonwood stag beetle uh, of North America. Beautiful beetle to get started. Um, really easy to breed, lays eggs very simply. And it's not as complex as other of the candidates, so thanks for watching.